Pretty inspired by the whole natural world. It could be almost any aspect of the natural world. 90% of the reason that I want to paint it is because there'll be some kind of light going on that triggers that. It's often the backlighting coming in from behind a leaf and the fringe around the edge of it that, that makes it exciting, or just the way light works underwater. I'm painting almost the same subject matter I was attracted to as a 10 or 11 year old boy. I once heard a great quote on CBC, <laughs> if you're doing as an adult what you were doing when you're 10 years old, you're a happy person, and I guess there's some truth to that. Days go by when there might be 10 paintings every 10 minutes coming into my head, so the tiniest little percentage of the, of the ideas actually ever make it to the light of day and become a painting. When I paint for me, I paint the best work I'm doing. And trying to get that feeling has been a pretty well a lifelong passion. When I was 10 years old, we were on a boat trip north of Paul River. We went to a place called Owen Bay and there was an old float house dragged up on the side of the shore. And I remember I looked through the window and I thought, holy, at some point, I would love to have a float house as a studio where I can have aquariums and I can uh, yeah, make it work. And so that idea was tinkering away in the back of my mind. And finally in 1991, I bought a float house and towed it into the middle of Clackwood Sound where I am at the moment. And it was exactly as it should be. To get to my studio is a nine kilometer boat ride from the town of Tofino. The boat I have is just a little Boston whaler. I've been packing lumber and couches and all kinds of stuff over the years. Um, most of that's now just large paintings going back and forth, but even those can be challenging because uh, when the wind picks up in the middle of winter, I've had paintings flip up, hit me in the face, and I had my glasses broken by a, a great big painting. The building was pretty small, and the ceiling was only eight feet and a half or so. And so I would get down my hands and knees with a cushion on my knees and try and paint the bottom part of the painting. I realized, you know, what I should do is put a second floor in this, this studio and, and actually create the studio space upstairs. By the end of 2006, I had created pretty well what I think is the dream of dream studios. Almost every painting I've ever painted has water in it, and it's probably because I'm surrounded by it all the time. Essentially, I'm, in, I'm embedded in what I love to paint. That very first night I ever spent in the float house was November of 1991, and uh, there were four wolves that started howling just at dusk. After that experience, I decided I better write this down. This is, this is a cool thing. So right from the very first night I ever spent here, I've pretty well every day filled in notes on the natural history that's going on around the, the float house. And that includes the birds, of course, but even what's going on in the marine world. Um, and those books have accumulated. There's over 60 of them now. The world shifts both naturally and unnaturally. Keeping track of that, I find, is a very, very important part of what I do here. What has evolved is a passion for the land around which I'm living. I first came to the Pacific Rim area when I was a university student at University of Victoria and I was studying biology and just came up here at the end of my first year and I was blown away by the place. It, uh, it, just, it just captured everything I'd ever imagined. I had decided a year before that that I was going to leave teaching high school, which I did for 10 years, and make art somehow my living. And I wasn't really sure how it was going to work or where I was going to do it. Because every time I sat down to paint, I was painting scenes of big open beaches and islands and big waves. I had a couple of years working for national parks, and then after four years, they wanted to hire me full time, and I decided I need time to paint in the winter. And so I, I quit, and yeah, from 1987 onwards, I've been making a living as an artist. Right from the get-go, I've always wanted a camera. At university, I picked up these cheap Pentax cameras. I'd take them in kayaks and go down rivers with them. As a result, I had a camera with me almost everywhere, and I always was thinking of the next picture. 
And so very often what I end up painting was the photo that I wished I could have taken. And, and those moments were very inspiring. In my studio, I'm a man of thousands of books and pictures. There's binders and binders and binders and boxes full of pictures all organized. And many of them are my own, 90% of them are. So I'm painting a wave and I just need to know how a wave works. Some little corner of a picture, it may not even be the main subject and it might be down in the lower corner and it's that little twist of water and I may not even use it exactly, but it just gives you that little extra confidence to dive in and, and go for it. Working without digital is probably the way I would choose to say I can work. I work very happily out of doors. Just the presence of everything you need to know is right there in front of you. It's so different than trying to do it out of memory or trying to work from a photograph. But you need to move fast. So what I've chosen to do over the years is start with a very dark background. I've chosen a paint called Dioxine Purple and that's made it really possible to very quickly, with a white pencil, draw in the, the subject. And then I often go in with the sky colour and if it's an ocean scene with the blue of the ocean. Within literally half an hour, most often the painting is falling into place very quickly. Whereas if that was a white canvas at the beginning, you're fighting constantly to get the colour dark enough that, that it makes sense. When I first tried to make a living as an artist, every summer I packed up a trailer and my van and I hit the road and I would go as far south as San Diego, I'd stop in Oregon, and I kept dreaming of the day when I would actually be able to have my own gallery. Ten years ago, almost today, I met a guy, Reno Del Zoppo, who had just arrived from Australia. We decided in 2013 we would open a gallery. Nobody in Tofino actually knew I was an artist. For the most part, all my work was under my bed. Having a location where the paintings were created has really, really been helpful and, you know, makes me feel good about the work I'm doing. It's quite a nice thing and I feel like I'm probably the luckiest artist I know. <laughs>